Mr. President, in the 1960 campaign, you used to say that it was time for America to get moving again. Do you think it is moving? And if so, how and where? The reason I ask you the question, Mr. President, is that the Republican National Committee recently uh, adopted a resolution saying you were pretty much of a failure. <laughs> I'm sure it was passed uh, unanimously. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that uh, we have made uh, significant progress on the economic front in the uh, increase in our gross national product, nearly 90 billion dollars, and a 25 percent increase in profits in. Uh, farm income uh, up 10 percent and all the rest. I think those statistics are available, they're obvious, and uh, I think they indicate that the United States has made substantial progress. Kennedy had always said that one last great effort should be made on a test ban and disarmament. At American University in Washington, he made an historic overture to the Soviet Union. No government or social system is so evil that its people must be considered as lacking in virtue. As Americans, we find communism profoundly repugnant as the negation of personal freedom and dignity. But we can still hail the Russian people for their many achievements in science and space, in economic and industrial growth, in culture, in acts of courage. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. Chairman Khrushchev, Prime Minister McMillan and I have agreed that high-level discussions will shortly begin in Moscow, looking towards early agreement on a comprehensive test ban treaty. In Moscow, Kennedy's words made a profound impression. Khrushchev said it was the best speech ever given by an American president. When negotiators finally gathered in Moscow, it took them only 10 days to produce the treaty to ban atmospheric tests. The test ban treaty was part of the president's vision for the future. Signing it had given him more satisfaction than any other achievement, but he could not be satisfied. The treaty still had to be ratified by the Senate, where opponents were already attacking it. And so the president turned to the country. It was the next to last tour he would ever make. He spoke of his visions of what Americans must do to reach the future we are living today and to survive the rest of this century we face tomorrow. We know that the struggle between the communist system and ourselves will go on. We know it will go on in economics, in productivity, in ideology, in Latin America, in Africa, in the Middle East, and Asia. But what we hope to do is lessen the chance of a military collision between these two great nuclear powers, which together have the power to kill 300 million people in the short space of a day. That's what we're seeking to avoid. That's why I support the test ban treaty. We cannot fulfill our vision and our commitment and our interest in a free and diverse future without unceasing vigilance, devotion, and most of all, perseverance. A willingness to stay with it. A willingness to do with fatigue. A willingness not to accept easy answers, but instead to maintain the burden as the United States must do the rest of this century until finally we live in a peaceful world.
John F. Kennedy never had a chance to say goodbye. But once in Ireland, he seemed to come close with another promise. Well, I'll not see you. I will see you uh, in my mind and uh, feel all of your good wishes, as we all will in our hearts. Last night, somebody sang a song which says uh, the words of which I'm sure you know, which come back to air in the morning, the morning. Come back to room, the land is I burn. Come with the shamrock in the springtime of the morning. This is not the land of my birth, but it's the land uh, for which I hold the greatest affection. And I certainly go back to the springtime. Thank you.